Hello, school dude Clem here, as some of you think I say. Now, I know some of you are probably getting a little bored with the singing art projects, but I'm determined to crack this thing. I've got about 57 million schematics here of singing art projects. So, by the end of this video, if I don't have at least one good singing arc, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to build all of those circuits and test them. Unfortunately, there's only one that I cannot build which is this one right here. Now it's not beyond my capabilities. The only trouble is I don't have any 4.7 microfarad 200 volt non-electrolytic capacitors and I've checked all my old circuit boards and things and I don't have any that even come close. Now this is just a small amount of circuit boards that I've collected over the years. And I've gone through every single circuit board that I have. Not even one of them has the capacitors that come close to what I need. Still got my good old 555 base driver here, connected up to the flyback and the spark gap that I've just made. Slight problem with this, I powered this up earlier and it does try to cook itself. Well, as you can see, the arc sometimes jumps to the back of the thing and, uh, Charles the wood, because I didn't really think about this. I just put it together with wood and hot glue, forgetting how hot the arc is going to be, and I'm afraid that might melt at some point, so I better not keep that running. Okay, so here I have a couple of circuits built. Now this one on the top is based on Vegmatic 1966's singing arc experiment. I've made a couple little changes to it. I've put a variable resistor here to adjust the frequency, and a transistor there to invert the duty cycle, so instead of being around 75%, it should be about 25%. And this one on the bottom is this circuit here. And unfortunately, the site that I got this from was all in Czechoslovakian, but I was still able to navigate it and find the schematic and build it, as you can see here. Slight problem. I did power this up earlier and found it didn't work. I had a light bulb connected to the MOSFET, and when I turn this thing on, the light bulb would just come on briefly and then dim out. And I went all over this circuit trying to find the problem, couldn't find it, checked it for short circuits and opens and everything, and all it was, was this wire here was not connecting this pin on the integrated circuit to the middle pin on the variable resistor. I don't know how I missed that, but after I thought to myself, you twit, and then reconnected it, it's now ready to be tested again which is what I'm going to do now. Well, it appears this thing has more bugs than I thought. Literally. I was going to plug this in, and this little guy decided to crawl onto the audio jack. Just sitting there. But I'm not, I'm not going to be using this audio jack anyway, because the line out of the tape recorder is not strong enough to drive a thing, but... So I'll be using a 3.5mm phone jack. And I'm just going to put him down and let him go wherever he's going. Okay, now I've moved that little wire to where it's supposed to be. As you can see, it's working well, the way it should be. Now, I believe this is for adjusting the pulse width modulation. If I do this, this should adjust the brightness of the bulb. Okay, I think we have working pulse width modulation. Now I'm just going to connect this up to a flyback and see if it can make an arc. Well, this is looking successful. Although I don't think it's driving the MOSFET gate as hard as it should because... I'm getting on the meter about 4.7 amps. And the MOSFET gets pretty warm if I run it for a while. And it doesn't get that warm with the 555 circuit that I've made. Also, putting this resistor in line is partially to blame, but it's always safer to do it that way. Speaking of safety, I've sealed all these connections with hot glue, so they're not going to come out at any time. But, let's see if we can audio modulate this and get it to sing. Well, just before I attempt to do a singing arc, I've connected the speaker up in place of the voice coil, and the reason for that is that this way I can fine-tune the circuit and when I get the clearest sound possible, I'll know I've found that sweet spot. So I'm going to power this up on the lowest voltage that I can, which is about 12 volts. 
You might be able to see the speaker go move out when I do this. I'm just trying to get that wire so it's not in front of the meter. There we go. Drawing about 280 milliamps. Now, if you do this yourself, I suggest that you use no more than 12 volts and you use a speaker that's at least 8 ohms and at least 10 watts. This speaker is an 8 ohm speaker out of a TV and I'm not sure what the wattage is but I imagine it's around somewhere around 15 watts so it should be safe. I think it's going to survive the torture I'm going to put it through. Anyway, I'm going to play something from the tape and let's see what we get. Don't think I'm going to get into any trouble playing this. Now I'm going to a... Uh, well, sound's gone. Okay, there was a drop out in the tape there. Just this. There we go. That's about the clearest sound. Drawing about 550 million. So that seems to be working good. Just gonna feel how hot the thing is. Yeah, there's a little bit of warmth there. So I can imagine the voice score has gotten a bit warm too. Yeah, I can feel a little bit there. Anyway, let's see what we get when I connect this up to a flyback. Well, as photonic induction would say, I am disappointed. Where's my hammer? Yep, getting very bad audio through this. However, I do know what's gone wrong, and I will admit that I made a mistake and I'm a bit of an idiot. When I was using the speaker, I was setting the duty cycle of the chip to about 50%, but for things like this, the duty cycle needs to be around 25%. So call me an idiot. But any way you look at it, it means that this thing is going to have to be adjusted again. And all that adjustment I did before, well, was for nothing. Although we did get a rather loud but basic Class D amplifier. Right, well, let's see if we can adjust this and make it actually do a sing arc. I'll turn on my meter, connect it up, this wire is really pissing me off because it will not get out of the way of the display. Okay, just get that to stay on there. Okay, we're reading about 2.2 amps on the meter. Now when I adjust the pulse width, that will affect the amount of current that the circuit is taking. So if I adjust that to about half that, we're getting about 2.2 amps, about 2.25 amps, so if I adjust that to about 1.12, that should be about half of that, and that should theoretically be a 25% duty cycle, assuming that what I had with the speaker was 50%, of course. Right, I'm going to adjust the pulse width. Current on the meter is dropping. Okay, that's a little bit too far. Let's go to 1.12. Okay, that's about as close as we can get it. Well, close as I can get it. Let's just see if this will arc. Ah, oh, yeah, what a beauty. And, and bingo! What did I just say that for? Anyway, let's play an audio signal and see if it works this time. Hmm. Still not much. Okay. I'm getting my little screwdriver, and I'm going to adjust the duty cycle while the thing is arcing, and we'll see if that produces anything. Try not to get myself electrocuted in the process. Well, we are getting a little something. Well, 
I am getting a little bit of sound out of it. It's quite distorted though. Well, I have no idea if you could hear that. So I think it's time to approach this from a different angle. Right, we're now putting Vegmatic 1966 to the test. Now, I did run this test before I started recording, and there are a couple of problems. Firstly, my camera tripod does not seem to be moving very freely. First problem is, the chip seems to be working absolutely fine, but I'm getting nothing out of the pulse width inverter. I don't know why it's not working. It's situations like this where an oscilloscope would be really handy. That is definitely going to be the next thing I'm going to get. Because I really need to see what is going on in these circuits. It works absolutely fine in the circuit simulation, but in real life it just doesn't want to know. So I've connected the MOSFETs gate directly up to pin 3 on the chip, and I can get an arc, and I've also disconnected the flyback's high voltage ground from the central ground, and that seemed to improve things before with the flyback's high voltage ground connected to the central ground, it just wasn't barely getting any audio at all, but now, let's just start this up. Of course, it would help if the chip was turned on as well. Okay, let's just get this to arc. I was flapping about a bit, but when I play the tape, I do get something that resembles the original sound. Right, now I've got a speaker connected in place of the flyback. I'm going to turn things on again. And start the tape playing. I can see that's working pretty good. Okay, there is a little bit of distortion there because I'm overmodulating a bit, but it's nothing anywhere near as bad as what I was getting with the flyback. But I really think I'm onto something here. So I think the next thing to do, connect this up again with the flyback not grounded and see if we get any audio out of it. Okay, well I've got the other circuit connected up with the flyback without the high voltage ground connected to the central ground. And it, it, it does sort of work now. However, this is about as good as I can get it to work. If I shorten the arc, Well, it just doesn't really sound like much at all. It sounds quite distorted when I put it there, but when I put it here... It's somewhat less distortion... ...and much more volume... ...but it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So, it looks like some further refinement is in order. can I say but snake in hell I've actually got this thing to work reasonably good remember this little circuit here my 555 driver that I made well I applied an audio signal to this to see if that would work and what do you know it works better than any other things that I've found on the internet. Crazy. Anyway, let's stop that now. Because I'll probably get into copyright issues. Thing is still glowing. Smelted that end of that wire into a nice little ball there. Yeah, but this circuit that I've made, I never intended this to be able to do a singing arc. It's a almost 50% duty cycle that I've got this configured to work at. Yet, it works if I put an audio signal through it. It will do a singing arc and sounds better than, well, better than the other ones I've tried. I think I know why, because I ran this in a circuit simulation. 
and found that there's a little bit of frequency modulation there as well, which is probably why it's working so good. Well, this video's getting too long already, so I'm going to stop now. But the next thing I'm going to do is build a high voltage power supply based on the best results that I've gotten from my experiments. And if you want to see a video of that, just say so and I'll do that. I'll make a video of it and upload it to YouTube. But anyway, that's just about it for now. So, until next time, goodbye.